quite interested to see how he'll perform. Absolutely. Uh, I think that's like the big thing, because right, because whenever Micah Laley was subbing in for Nip, they actually had some success, right? They placed top four DPL. Uh, they won that, that Starletter I-League tournament back in September. Uh, so they were actually getting some pretty favorable results as Michael Laley was, was standing in for the team. And it even caused some people to question, would they in fact just stick with that five? Would in fact they just have to kind of let Pitt go despite the fact that he was really only out because of an injury. It's not like he deserved to be out. Uh, but then you get this awkward moment where like, oh, we're actually having this success with Michael Laley. Like, do we stick with it? But they made the conscious decision not to, to bring Pitt back in. And so far, uh, this is, I mean, his first land back, and, and people were wondering how well he would play. And so far, Nip are doing okay in this group. Right? They got waxed by FaZe, but they've won a couple of close overtime games against the likes of Cloud9 uh, in, a, in a, a really close game. A 16-14 win there. That was on uh, Train, and train, then they yep. did beat Mouse Sports pretty clean on Overfast. So. Yeah, I think... Uh... The stars on Nip are showing up today, like always, get right ahead that massive clutch on Train versus Cloud9. Forest doing work, so those two are always looking uh, to get a ton of frags on the map, having big impacts, and I think we'll uh, continue to see that. This is also a map that I, like, I personally haven't watched too much Nuke, um, but this is also one of the maps where I've seen Freiburg actually do pretty well. Um, which I know he's the guy that sometimes catches a lot of heat uh, for not playing well, but this seems to be a map where I've seen him in the past like have a couple of pretty big games. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how that all plays out because the firepower certainly can be there. But again, Heroic has really shown that uh, their firepower is stepping up. Like Valda's uh, like playing great as usual. I think Nikolai, uh, like this new young guy, is 18 year old from like a lesser known Danish team. So far, he's been playing pretty well. Uh, the numbers have been there for them. And then you you got a guy like Mati, who's a very intelligent player and usually a pretty stable rifle. And even Freeze had a big game with the op on Cobblestone just now. I mean, um, and of course the op is going to be big on the CT side of this map on being able to be dynamic, move around, uh, and, and try to like find different kills all over the map. And so that's why your question about who's going to opt for nip on CT side is really interesting. Um, cause I feel like it would normally be pit in the past when he was on the team, but I don't know how that'll work out now. Yeah. And yesterday actually liquid versus G2, we didn't really see the op have too much impact on either side, to be honest. And like you said, like Nuke is starting to get played more and more now. So um, I really haven't seen like a super dominant op on on Nuke yet. That is very true. So it looks like we are about to get live here with the pistol round. Looks like Nip will get onto that CT side first, which can sometimes be known as like the heavier side for this map. But I would say that like Nip has usually been pretty balanced across the map. So. Uh, they're certainly capable of getting their T rounds, is my point. So it doesn't hurt them too much if it's not as good a CT side as it can be for other teams. But as we get live with Pistol, we do see a lot of Heroic kind of gathering up here inside Inner. We do see Snappy on the roof. He loves to always clear out these windows every single round. He will do this. Uh, that way you never really know when the nades will be coming in. So I kind of like that. He just consistently likes to break the glass early in the round. Yeah, definitely good because when you actually do want to execute and use that window to throw nades through, it's not so obvious, right? Fantastic. So just making every round look the same, but definitely will be different. And I will say Heroic actually has some really cool nade executes on the upper bomb site. We'll see later once they can start affording Molotovs and smokes and stuff like that regularly. So I'll be on the lookout for those. But right now, it's just going to be a bit more simple. They use the Molotov to clear top hut. Now they come swarming out in the outer bomb site, but so far, Git Rise has been able to get his. Uh, to have it into a two on three, but now Valor tilts to balance in Heroic's favor. The bomb going to get planted. Pit trying to fight from heaven, but he's not finding the mark. Forrest looking to join him as he comes up the ladder here any moment now with that USP. They don't have a kit, but there could be one somewhere on the ground, perhaps that someone drops. So, yeah, I see one right there in front of Forrest. So that means they have a little bit of time to work with here as Forrest should be able to collect that. But right now, Heroic playing pretty smart here, just playing back in hut. Squeaky, they even have a uh, Terrace, I think, flanking through heaven which will be picked up on though by pit and forest is on the diffuse with the kid he's sticking it heroic snappy though fighting in but not there in a time that was a really key kill from pit onto nikolai to kind of keep forest on the diffuse oh, wow that round was all heroic for so long and then forest just just sticks the bomb pit doing an awesome job covering him and yeah that round should have went in heroic's way for sure but great job by nip there always so clutch and i really like the pistol from heroic actually what they did there was a molly top hut which is a super op spot for a pistol round or any round in general so mulling that is very good and then they threw a smoke out of squeaky and what that did was it, it put so much focus on 
from the CTs. They put so much focus on the squeaky door, spamming it, making, thinking they were going to go down vents, that they actually just all four plowed out hut and just caught everyone kind of off guard and then got, you know, out of the hut super cleanly. Yeah, I think the big thing there is that they just caught, uh, like, Pit caught, like, a key kill. The key force on the bomb is really, like, the big difference maker there. Yeah. Uh, as we do see Heroic, uh, you know, buying up what they can. Some Tech Nines and Ump in the play. Again, breaking all of the glass up top. Snappy lining up this smoke, which should block off Mini, I think, is that what they're looking for there. Uh, they'll once again use Molotovs to probably clear the top of Hut, try to get people out of position. But meanwhile, we have Exist pushing Hut, catching a great timing here. And I find a couple of players with their pants down, and he gets a hat trick spray down, and now get right with the M4 on the site. Could just finish the job. He's already got one kill on the bomb down. Snappy fighting back, but it's not going to matter for us. We'll finish it off. So that's the 2 0 for Nip. Seem to be reading these executes pretty well. Yeah, that was uh, exists the timing god there at Hut. And he's playing in front of all the utility, right? Like the, all those smokes, flashes, Molotovs that Heroic is throwing from a set execute. Exist is in front of all of that, so none of that even matters. So, um, good job to just squeeze in the hut at the perfect timing. And guys, if you're having the sound issue, if the sound is not synced up on the stream, just refresh the stream and it should fix your issue. And there you go. Also, Metis knows about it, so maybe he'll be able to do something on his end. But right now, we have Heroic just basically on a full eco and nip. Just catching them as they come down the vents. Easy peasy stuff for NIP. So 3-0. But now we'll have Heroic onto a full bind again. They have some really good executes on the upper bomb site that I'm aware of. They also uh, have Valda being able to usually be a pretty good kind of solo outside player to kind of just create plays and, and put pressure on net. So I'll be curious to see uh, how Valda is able to handle outside against some of these NIP defenders. And if he can kind of have that same impact that I've seen him have in other nuke games. Yeah, I'm really interested to see how they're going to work the T-side here. Obviously, outside is a super, uh, pretty much the thing you, that you'll do on your default to get control of. So getting outside just provides so many options. Getting to Seeker, getting under Heaven, in Heaven. Now that you can pretty much jump everywhere and get anywhere on this map. Um, like you said, Snappy is going to be breaking those windows. Breaking every single window with his block here. And looks like they are going to go into a set piece. Nico has a smoke cocked, just waiting to, to you know, get the, the word to throw. Freeze also lining him one up. So it looks like they're just gonna, you know, sit here and just wait to execute. Yeah, get right though, getting aggressive again here on onto Madi. And so it's gonna be a player that I think that's towards um, ramp. I'm not 100% sure. I know that's where Madi likes to play a little bit, but uh, looks like we are gonna see all the nades being set up here. It seems like it's gonna be uh, kind of a fake because you see Nikolai and company actually using all the, this nade chaos at uh, upper to actually uh, know that minis may be distracted so they can walk on the catwalk into outer. So you can see that they're actually looking to flank heaven. Um, I don't know if anybody is really paying attention. I think Get Right is kind of eyeing this from top hut. Yeah, now he'll climb up the ladder, so he'll be ready for this. There is the first frag onto Nikolai, and he seems to be aware that there's a second there as well. He'll take care of Valda, turns around, looks for more. Freeze, gonna be able to get the kill, but now he's all alone. He's gonna have to ace to win this round. He's gonna catch Pit inside upper. Whoa, he almost got flanked behind, but somehow he's able to evade Forrest there. And so now he still kind of poses a bit of a threat. There's a little hole in the door here. He's going to peek through it, but Forrest is going to find it. So there you have it, Nip, up four to zero. These rounds keep coming close, but Nip keeps coming out in the better end. Yeah, Get Right just took a dump on those people flanking Heaven. <laughs> like, he, the guy that ran into the doorway from Heaven, was, he just got in the doorway, was about to flank Get Right, and then Get Right, I think, just hit him with like a triple or a double dink with the MP9, just instantly destroyed him and then just cleaned up the second guy that came in as well. And I was going to say, this was looking very good from Heroic, but get right, too smart watching every corner. Absolutely, as now Heroic just on pistol, so Nip very well set up to get the 5-0 start, as we are going to see a lot of Heroic members just looking to play outside. Not really a smoke wall in play, but they'll kind of make... A smoke tunnel, I guess. I don't know what you'd really call this. To try to get into the secret stairs. Exist, though, able to find one frag as they come down. And now Freiburg just greeting them in the back halls. Gets two kills. Valda eventually takes him out. But now it's a two-on-four. Valda does pick up the M4. And Madi is going to be able to catch his vent rotation. And he'll just catch Forrest for free. Comes up. A little bit of awkwardness. But Exist wins the fight. And so Valda all alone. He does have bomb. But trying to get a plant here is going to be damn near impossible. Yeah, it looks like Pit has uh, the ramp room looking down from U-Haul. Exists, just gonna finish it off, killing him right in the, uh, the. I think it was the event there. I was looking at Pit, but yeah, 
not able to get a bomb plant there or get anything happening. Fryberg with a good counter smoke at secret pretty much just stalls that and gets a 2k and uh, puts that secret push to an end. So what do you really accredit this 5-0 star to? Is it Nip just reading Heroic well? Is it just like Nip trading better? Like what do you feel Heroic's biggest stumbling block has been? I mean, I don't think tactically anything is too wrong from Heroic. Um, I mean, that first gun round, you had two people flanking heaven. I thought this looked great. Like, and then just get right, just a big individual performance. Like on an MP9, he gets a 3K, right? So um, I think it's just Nip playing well. Just, you know, grabbing the pistol, next two, okay, whatever. You get the next two rounds. And then um, this is the next gun round. There's, the only, there's only been two, right? Right, yeah, this I think will be like... I think they had kind of like a tech nine by, but yeah, this will be like the second real gun round from Heroic. And this time it looks like they want to put a lot more presence on outside again, kind of uh, once again doing the smoke. It's not the exact same smoke while other teams use. It's a little bit tighter uh, over towards Secret Stairwell. Um, but they're still going to be able to get their players down. There is a push, though, from the CT side up on this. It's going to be Freiburg once again stalling them out with that very smoke you were talking about from the previous round. So this is getting them some intel. And it's like I said, it's slowing Heroic down. They're not going to be able to get control of back halls maybe as quickly as they'd want it to. Yeah, it, and if you watch how G2 plays this, or Shox, he plays the, the secret here. And similar to how Freiburg is smoking off secret, Shox will kind of just play a very, very tiny crack where he can just see someone cross. And as soon as he sees someone, he lets go of a smoke. So um, very, very similar style, but um, just executed a little bit differently. And so now that Heroic is kind of coming into the last 25 seconds of the round, they're actually trying to see if they can't pinch upper. Uh, they still have Mahdi inside hut, and they had tried to flank heaven there, but it gets caught by Pit. Mahdi going to be able to catch a little bit of a bait and switch there to take down Freiburg. And now Heroic are starting to clean up this upper bomb side. It's only Pit and Forest left in a three on two. Bomb's going to get planted by Nikolai now inside the site. Forest trying to see if he can't catch a timing through hut, but Heroic is more than ready to catch that push. And so now it's all on Pit in a 1v3. He's going to jump back through the hut window, and Mahdi going to be on top of things so just a great reaction from her like i think like even though their initial plans maybe kind of got botched they're able to still kind of play themselves out of it and uh, get like a pretty sick upper attack going yeah i mean they had so many people coming from different angles i'm really loving that they're actually using this outside rafter because if you can actually abuse it it's going to make their t-side so much easier and that's two gun rounds we've seen and that's both times they've had a guy at least one guy going on the outside rafter flanking heaven. So you had guys from mini, you got the squeaky hut, heaven. So that's so hard to hold if you can actually uh, get out there on those outside rafters. Now we got to see how they adjust. And Forrest is actually going to be the one opping here. So that is interesting that he decides to pick that up. And yeah, I mean, Nip knows that they've been abusing the outside rafter. And this is, you know, Forrest going to be locking it down here. It's true. I mean, as an opera, though, that, that has played outside nuke sometimes, you find it really difficult to watch. Like, there's so many different things you have to worry about. The normal push, like, it's so easy for, like, Marshmallow now to get pushed or Twinkie, whatever you call it. Uh, and you have to worry about Raptors. It can kind of be, like, scary, right? Yeah, it's definitely way more awkward now. Um, I haven't played too much on the nuke, being an opera out there, but... Yeah, they're just cool. Four is getting a crazy shot, actually, <laughs> through that smoke. I'm not sure. I did not see it from my perspective, but... Free is actually getting a trade on get right and then leaving it in 2v4. I mean, this is looking very comfortable for Nip here. And as long as they don't get too many picks, Forrest hitting another one. Mahdi entering into the bomb site. 1v3 here. Yeah, that was really well done. I think Get Right kind of takes any fear that might have been there from Forrest, like with what he had to worry about. Like, Get Right just cleans house and two kills. And Forrest, of course, if you can find a shot through the smoke, then you're yeah. not really feeling too much heat at that point. And now it's all on Mahdi. And Forrest will be able to finish it off. That's a hat trick there for him with the op. And so the first round that the op is in play for the CT side, it has a massive impact on the round. And of course, Get Right continue to play well. 10 kills and 7 rounds played. So he's certainly getting uh, his work done. And so now Heroic just really back to this type of force pistol type situation. And I mean, Nip are starting to build one of those like big CT side nukes that uh, can sometimes be present on this map. Yeah, not, not a good start for Heroic here. Four is coming up big with that 3k. And it's always like a weird question to, to answer. Like, should Forrest be opping? Because he's such a talented, like one of the best riflers in the world. But, I mean, his, his op is also insane. So, uh, getting a 3k in that round, Forrest doing work as always. I think it also just depends on Pitt's comfort level having the op in his hands. Because I know, like, before, Forrest would kind of opt T sides and Pitt would opt CT was kind of the pattern that I saw emerge. Same, uh, yeah. But, 
Uh, but now that he's just coming back onto the team, maybe like the confidence are are what like they're looking to do. This isn't there for for him to have an off in his hands, or it could just be map dependent. Uh, we don't really know yet. But either way, heroic already suffering a casualty here in this round again. Not much to work with, no utility, just relying on pistols and maybe want an aim duel or two and try to make magic happen. But usually it's Nip that's known for the magic. As we do have Get Right on the outside, able to take down Valda with the headshot. Looking for more Nikolai here at red, trying to strafe out and just get some chip damage done. But Get Right has all the time in the world to finish off the M4 frag. And so, don't think there's too much to be had here. I would ask you, though, if you're heroic, do you feel pressure to change anything at this point on how you're running your T side? Or is it really just coming down to, like, late round trades that has been their problem? I don't think there's been too many problems for Heroic Seaside. I mean, at the end of the day, this still is Nuke, and you're still in the game being 7-1. I don't think you have to do anything, like, you know, too gimmicky. You know, stick to your strat book, stick to your game plan, and uh, maybe try to abuse those outside Raptors one more time. Yeah, I know some people are asking where Budget Anders is. He will be back a little bit later tonight, just kind of giving him a break. He's having to run the stream, observe, and cast, and he had like a 10 or 11 hour day yesterday, and he's cast the first four games today. So just trying to give him a little bit of a break so he can keep his sanity. And so, like I said, you'll see him for the last game of the night. But here it is, Freeze with the op. Actually going to find the outside pick this time, taking down Get Right, who has been certainly a thorn in her side this game. So to get him off the board early certainly helps. And now Pit, though, defending Ramp Room Snappy with the quick trade. So this has actually been one of the best rounds we've seen out of Heroic so far to get a four on three in the mid round and have control of an area of the map, which this time happens to be Ramp Room. Yeah, I mean, numbers really mean nothing on Nuke. Like, you can see an advantage just instantly dwindle down. But this plant on top of the, the site, oh, they just saw it good, good coverage by Snappy there, but I thought they were, uh, Exist might be able to get that kill. That's yeah, such a cheeky plant. can be so hard to do anything against this, to be quite honest, because you're open to everything. But that's just half the battle. You have to at least get to it first. And right now, Nip are really being held off well by Heroic. They're not even able to get out of Spooky Door with Forrest. He's already taking so much damage. Freiburg from the window gets one, but quickly traded, and there goes Forrest. So Heroic just, you know, being able to trade very well in the beginning, get ramp room quick. And there was just no hesitation there, right? Like, as soon as they got ramped, they just immediately fell into the lower bomb site. Yeah, that was good. They pretty much pushed to the back. They had like multiple people on the bomb site, uh, like people above the vent holding the vent push. You had Snappy holding the door push. Planning, planning on top makes it very hard to you know die while planning because window side can't see you. Um, the barrel can't see you unless he's fully exposed. So, um, good, well thought out execute on the lower site there. And well done indeed there from Heroics. So that's going to be a second round on the board. And Nip actually running out of money right now. If they lose this round, they'll actually be on to a save. So this could be where Heroic really start to get their work in in this first half from their T side. If they can follow up that round with this one, as we so often see Snappy clearing out the windows, setting up, I believe, some set nades for the upper bomb site. So it looks like they may just go for that. They don't have any outside presence. So it looks like they want to just hit this upper bomb site. But look at Exist. He's done this before where he catches a great timing pushing hut. Looks like it'll happen for him again. But this time he only gets one frag before it's traded. But Freiburg there to follow it up with even more. And so many fast exchanges. But it all comes down to a two on two. There's still a CT up here on the Raptor. No one knows it. Forrest playing patient. Looking to ninja his way out. There's the frag. Drops down. Looks for more. Looking for Freeze. But Freeze able to Ooh, win the nice fight. Shot. Wow, that was so hectic, but Heroic just come out ahead. Yeah, that was just like, use every single nade, molly, flash we have. Let's enter the bomb site. Um, whoever planted actually planted into a smoke, so that was actually what saved the plant, because Forrest was lurking above. Didn't want to spam the smoke to give, it, give his position away, and he really almost had that dropping down. Freeze hits a nice shot, gets him pushing in too hot there, and just to and execute that just went their way. Indeed. So now, as we talk about with uh, with Nip losing that round and their money being so low, they're only going to be able to work with USPs this round. So this is setting up Heroic nicely to find themselves a fourth round. At this point in the half, this is looking really good for them. Like, a, you know, if they can find a couple of more, get to like six rounds for the half, they'll actually probably feel pretty good about it. But again, Nip is also pretty well known for having a, a decent T side on this map. Again, I think there's like usually pretty equal distribution for them between their T and CT sides. So... I don't think that they're like have any need to panic at this point. Like I think so far this half is is going kind of even. Mm -hmm. I agree. 
And this is actually a really scary anti-eco map. I mean, Nip actually didn't invest into anything. We have five USPs on the board, so not going to be a really a scary round. But there's so many close quarter fights. Oh, some TK damage down there. Love tap. Uh, but there's just so many close range corners that any, you know, shotguns, P250s, 5.7s, everything can be so dangerous on nuke. But should be a clean round here for Heroic. I mean, if they need to enter into a bomb site, Mahdi has that MAC-10. He can jump kill. And, you know, get that information for his team. Yeah, I mean, this round is pretty much being cleaned up with ease. It really wasn't so much that Nip could do in that round with just USP. So it will be 7-4, to four, but Nip will be back on to a buy this round. Pit with a little bit limited firepower with the FAMAS. But everyone else is going to be able to get M4s and, and decent utility. We also won't have an op on Nip anymore either is the other thing. Forrest, of course, had a couple of pretty big rounds with it. But will not be at his disposal this time around. Um, but we have seen Get Right and, and you know, Exist in Freiburg has some pretty big rounds with M4, so we'll see if they can get back to that in this round. As we are going to see Freeze taking this off outside alone. Baldit slowly joining up with him, so it looks like Heroic just kind of their same standard opening. Yeah, nothing crazy happening right now. Um, just breaking those windows is snappy, keeping everything consistent. Uh, Freeze going for a little bit of a peek here. Nothing too crazy, just kind of holding Twinkie yellow. Um, yeah, just waiting this round out. Yeah, I mean, like I said, this is Snappy's routine every round. He almost always lines up the same, like, mini smoke from here as well. Uh, this time, though, Nikolai is actually going to be able to catch a kill onto Pit, who was trying to get aggressive at the ramp room. So, this is going to give Heroic a little bit, uh, an easier time now that they have, like, one frag to their advantage so early in the round before they've even really tried to execute anything. As I'll leave Valda outside alone, as they normally do, to see if he can't create plays. But everyone else is gathering up for some type of execute uh, towards upper, it seems. A snap, he's going to be lining up a Molotov. I think this is to hit top hut to clear out that spot. Now they're just going to explode on the site. Or not. They're actually going to fake this out and go into ramp room. And get right, force it, just drop down to the lower bomb site. Heroic is short on time, so they're going to have to be quick to attack as get right continues to backpedal. Exist gets inside the vents, and he's going to be able to clear out as well. So despite the fast movements of Heroic, we're seeing Nip get some kills, but as quick as it looked like Nip were in the advantage, we have Heroic fight right back with three. And so now it's all in Exist. 1v2 bomb will get planted. Exist trying to fight the player at ramp. He gets that kill. 1v1 now, and he wins that. So well done, Exist. A quad kill round. And I think you were making this point a little bit earlier that sometimes a numbers advantage on this map doesn't really matter because of how quick it can turn, and that's exactly what happened in this round, like two different times. Yeah, look, Exist was at the door. Two seconds later, he's in the vent. You know, you can just move and just get so many multi-frags. It's crazy. Great job by uh, Exist there. Um, but that was actually a pretty big mistake by Pit. Like, when there's nothing happening on a map and everything is super quiet, you know the terrorist team is, is holding everything on the map, right? Like, so for Pit to just be walking through ramp without any teamwork, you know, with an extra teammate to bail him out or anything like that, he kind of just walked through, and, and of course someone's going to be defaulting ramp. Like, where do you think they are? They haven't worked outside, haven't thrown a smoke outside. They're clearly in lobby, holding, waiting for aggression. So um, maybe Pig getting a little bit antsy there, thinking he has to make some of, uh, type of play. Not doing that well on the scoreboard right now. So a yeah. tactical coming out for Heroic, I believe. Yeah, I guess. I mean, it's just crazy how many times that round shifted, <laughs> like, who was in the advantage. It felt like when Heroic got the first kill, they're up five on four. It's looking pretty good for them. Then they get ramped. They're getting down lower pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, all of a sudden, though, you see Nip get a couple of kills, but then Heroic fight back with three of their own. So it's just like a roller coaster ride. But in the end, Exist wins a 1v2 uh, clutch, so really big on him. As, uh, he's had a couple of big plays. He had that hat trick round as well when he pushed Hut like earlier in the half. That was pretty huge. So definitely seeing a pretty pretty functional CT side coming out of Nip right now. Yeah, it's looking well. As again, nothing special from Heroic to open. Snappy just clearing out those windows, man. <laughs> Doing work. Just laying down the hammer. Those windows didn't stand a chance. We do have Nikolai kind of sitting outside a little bit here, but again, they're not really putting any pressure outside. And I wonder if this has been like something like lately we haven't seen them throw any smoke wall outer. Like even if you're not going to go outer, that could at least draw some attention there. Whereas I feel like Nip have never had to worry about outside too much, at least lately. 
Yeah, it's always been a thing. Like, throw your outside smokes regardless of you going outside because it will make the CTs panic and rotate and, you know, it just does so much for you. Indeed, as we are going to see Heroic use those smokes to try to see if they can't spot into this upper bomb site. So far, a one for one trade exists still alive inside the site. We'll find a second before Nikolai is able to fight back. Forrest, though, keeping his team in the advantage, but Get Right gets caught by Madi. And so, like, again, just all these trades, but it winds up being a two on two. Madi going to go ahead and put the bomb down. Forrest trying to come around Mini. Could have catch Madi before he can close AK out. No, not quite there in time. And now Madi has intel on at least one player. He's got Freeze watching the flank. Madi going to find a frag, getting pushed by Pit. He will get taken down, but Freeze there to step around with the op. And so Heroic with a fifth round and money again low on NIP. So this is shaping up to be quite a crazy half. Yeah, I mean, that upper execute is absolutely chaos. I mean, there's just so much going on. Flashes, smokes, it's just, just it's going crazy. Like, for people to run in there and get kills, it's just very unpredictable on who's going to come out on top. And Heroic has thrown that execute out quite a few times, but it's always a little bit of a different look. Like, the previous round we had that upper execute into a ramp hit, upper execute into a majority squeaky, upper execute into, you know, majority hut. So they're giving different looks, but... You know, from Nip's perspective, it might look the same. Yeah, it's almost like creating the same type of illusion of of consistency that you would see with an outside smoke wall every single round, which we talked about before. Yeah, exactly. I know, that, I know that's something that Optic likes to do a lot. Uh, some of the French teams also have kind of the same mentality of like, we're going to smoke wall a lot, and we may just sneak a bunch of players into secret, or we may just like wait uh, to, to do an upper execute. Whereas it seems like Snappy is always lining up these nades to give you the pretense that this is going to be an upper execute uh, and flush people out of position with Molotovs and get people in awkward space with smokes, but they don't always necessarily follow it up. And so it does keep Nip guessing, I feel like. Yeah, like here's the same nade, but they're going to be wrapping outside Rafter. Nico leading the charge, or leading leading the walk here. Forrest, I think, just spotting them, though. Yeah, you do see Forrest alive and waiting here with that CZ, just playing inside the corner, waiting for someone to come around the corner. So far, no one's actually done that quite yet, but Nikolai is certainly on his way. And will he be able to get the pick? No, Forrest able to find it. Now he's going to be able to pick up an AK as well. And the rest of Nip are just cleaning house across the board. It seems like everyone's pitched in, only exists without a frag for Nip that round. So good team effort. And they're now up 9-5. to five. And now Heroic is the one who's going to be going into the final round of the half with limited economy. Economy. Yeah, I mean that that low buy from Nip, just a couple CZs and you know whatever they could get right there wins the round. That's why I said it's just so deadly, especially if you're going up or people top hut. Um, there's just so many close corners where these pistols can be so OP. Indeed, and so now Heroic will have to see if they can't make magic happen with their own pistols with just the Tech Nines at this point. Pit, they gonna come out on the Mahdi doing decent damage there. But Monty not going to oblige him with any type of peek at this point. As things are relatively quiet across the map. Uh, haven't seen any nades come out just yet. Smoke from the CT side onto radio. No presence outside right now from Heroic. Yeah, it looks like Snappy is throwing those same heaven nades. Uh, you know, mauling top hut, throwing a smoke out. And Valde getting some entries at ramp here. And Snappy going to be following him up. And they actually have the man advantage now on Heroic, and they do have control of the ramp room as well. Freeze is still uh, floating around inside the vents, trying to see if he can't cut off a CT rotate. He's also kind of making sure that lower bomb site's actually clear for his team, as he does peek one side of the Raptors. But Freiburg waiting in the back halls will catch Freeze as he exits. And so now it's a two on two. What does Heroic want to do with that information? Looks like they are content just to kind of hold back. They still have a good amount of time left on the clock, 40 seconds to be exact, as Snappy continues to scope out options here in lower, keeping his crosshairs trained on the vents where Freiburg will peak. It's just the timing of it all. He was pre-aiming the right spot, but literally turned away just as Freiburg took the shoulder peak. And so now it's all on the back of Valde. He has one frag on the round. Can he find more? He's just gonna jump inside the smoke. Freiburg though, spamming through, and Exist will find him from behind in the end. So a 10-5 half from Nip, and I think Nip's more than content with that amount of rounds. Yeah, that's. I, I think Nip will have a pretty good T side here, so n nothing to sweat about. Good half from them, and I mean, just the way that Heroic was playing their T side, I, I personally don't. I mean, Nuke is a really tough map, but the way they're playing their T sides is like everyone just sits in spawn, holds a flat, uh, holds a smoke, 
And then once the in-game leader calls, you throw your smoke, and then you rush through these these choke points. And you're never really in a position where you're favored to win the fight, right? Like, you're coming out of a tiny little hut corridor, and a CT could be right above you in the rafters, across that new beam, heaven, behind sight boxes, Asian vent. Like, you're never in a position where you really have the odds of winning your battle. And it's all about just, like, you always just get shot in the side of the head. So, like, Nuke is one of the worst maps for that. But especially, especially the way they're playing it is like they're giving their, they're not giving any of their players to really use their own individual talent. They're kind of just, you know, oh, we're going to execute the, the X strat and, you know, throw your smokes and just zero to 100, rush out a hut. Yeah, which is actually a little bit different than what I saw out of Heroic. When I was watching them play Nuke, uh, the, the one time they played it at Montreal, you could see that they were like using outside smokes to create space for Valda to make those individual plays you were talking about. And they really kind of trusted him to to like work outside either to like find an entry or just like hold people off from rotating while they kind of ran some of those same uh, snappy nades that, that you saw. So it's like an element of their play was missing that I'm used to seeing when I watch them play nuke, which is the Valda factor. Uh, not that Valda played a bad half. He still mm -hmm. got his frags, but it's like he wasn't being that nuisance I'm used to seeing outside on a consistent basis. Like they, they, there was a lot of times that they just left outside completely open and it just didn't even pressure it at all. And then you'd have rounds where they would wrap two around catwalk. So it was just kind of a different look. Yeah, I mean, this is kind of like a style, like a T side style for a team that might not have as much uh, raw talent as the other team, since you're really just relying on stuff that you practice in your own server. You've dr you know you dry ran it, so like you know maybe they're not confident in it's like all the individual plays that their players can make by getting outside control, opening up rounds. Like you know, for example, G two will just kind of just spread out and just be more loose and just individually make decisions. So just a different style, but uh, you can see that those those executes were actually very drilled for heroic, and they had so many different looks. It wasn't too bad. Yeah, again, it's definitely in that they like playing, and they have a pretty good record on offline. But they're going up against Nip, who have been considered one of the best nuke teams in CS:GO right now. Even like you said, dating back to the original nuke with different lineups, and a lot of those players are still the same, though. Of course, really only one player has ever changed on this lineup, basically. Uh, over time, like those four have been on this team since the birth of the game. So the comfort certainly there. This push around certainly holds a lot of weight on how this game can play out as Nip looking to just storm the front in the lower bomb site. Forrest already with a couple of entries. Freeze trying to fight from behind with this USP. Finally finds himself a frag. Uh, but Nip's already done so much damage and they have the bomb down. They have uh, a, a huge man advantage at this point. It's really only Valda left now. Trying to see what he can do with this P2K, but he gets cleaned up quickly there by Freiburg. And so Nip, no hesitation whatsoever. 11 to 5 now the score line. Yeah, just a good old simple ramp rush into lower. You know, as as crazy and how in-depth Counter-Strike is, sometimes it's as simple as buy five buy five armor, jump around the corners, and get some headshots by rushing ramp. So, I mean, good good job by Nip. They got down there pretty swiftly, never really let go. And, uh, you know, able to... Looks like we're going to be stopping this round here, but really yeah, never lost like control some... of the round. Yeah, I guess there was some type of technical issue there, so they do stop. But looks like they're Chris, please going to start up. again. May need to... Uh, I think because Chris J joined the server. Ooh. Yeah, okay. So we're going to have to do some type of reload. By the way, the observing is bad. Everyone tweeted on fire, Metis, you suck at observing, or something like that. <laughs> there you go. Let's throw him under the bus. Also, if you hate the casting, it's definitely not me, Dustin Red. It's definitely met us. Also, tweet him about that. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Moobot does not lie. I mean, just check who's casting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Point if, casters. if you see who's casting on Moobot, it clearly says it's medicine and Adrin. If I do a good job, though, definitely follow Dustin Red. Even though it's Metis casting. It's weird doing play by play again, man. I just, like, never do it anymore. <laughs> but it's been fun. It's always fun casting with you, Adrin. I don't think you get at it. I like it. Yeah. I'm enjoying it. I would I hope think you Nip's were just gonna, you know, 16-5 this. I don't know. I'm thinking 16-5. Nip's cleaning yeah, I, house. I don't know if it's gonna be that clean, but I definitely <laughs> think heroic. We're looking for more out of their T side than five rounds. Um, it's the crazy thing is though, there was so many rounds that almost went their way. Like there was a lot of scrappy, like kind of two on two situations. It felt like uh, in late rounds where Nip was just kind of getting the majority of them, uh, and that was kind of like the big difference. Yeah, Nuke is always scrappy like that. 
Like, you know, you're going up to the upper bomb site. There's, there's just so much going on in nuke. Vents, lower, upper, it just fast rotates. Especially, like, with v what Valve did to this map, they added ladders on the hut. Above the hut, you can go up the ladder into heaven. You can go outside, just jump into heaven. There's I will so say this, though. much like, mobility on this map. They actually won five of the last ten rounds. That's actually pretty decent when you lose pistol, you lose opening gun, you get set back, and you still come up with five rounds in the half. Like, that's actually not too shabby. Um, it's just all about how their CT side can hold. Nip, of course, winning pistol going to give them firepower advantage in these two rounds. So, Nip, like, setting themselves up for 13-5, but Heroic, able to get force uh, pistols and armor, which, again, like you said, a lot of close corners. These pistols can definitely be a, a big problem. And look at this Heroic getting very aggressive all across the map. As looks like Madi is actually even going to be able to flank outside. Oh, the timing, though, to get right, going to catch on to him while he's trying to clear T-spawn. So it's wound up being an easy kill for get right who will be able to pick up some bonus cash with the max 10 because of that and it looks like snappy will also get dealt with pretty quickly so nip looking to find their 12th round here pretty quickly yeah i like what nip is doing on their anti-eco i mean just go outside avoid avoid close ranges as much as you possibly can at a certain point you won't be able to but at least try to get some entries See if anyone will give you an, uh, any, any peeks, any looks here, and you know, get right. Just watching his flank, you can't flank this guy, man. He's always gonna be looking out, lurking, just waiting for someone to make the plays that he makes. So, and he's looking to make some more money here. But Nico is in the what do you even call that side that Nico's at? I don't know. I've heard people calling call it, it sink? decontamination or something like that. I've heard like sink as well. Yeah, sure there's, have, like, apparently you know, there's like a sign that says decontamination between the two sinks. And that's so such been, an awful... I know, but I just, I've just actually heard that you... Yeah. Two, two decontamination. Because I mean, that used to be toxic, obviously, but now there's like that whole other room yeah, that's in lower that people that can call toxic. toxic. Yep. Yeah, so I mean, I don't know what the official call is on that. Yeah. Since I've heard I've decontamination thrown around. Yeah. That's it. Feels bad, man. I sounded so emo when you said I never played this map. <laughs> Actually, I did play this map once, but I, I don't think we ever had to call that. I forget Don't. what we called it. Reddit knows, I'm sure. This map sucks. <laughs> <laughs> this cast is going well, mate. <laughs> so we're, we're, we're looking at Nip trying to go 13-5 right now. They already have a 4-on-3, obviously heroic. Not much to fight with in this round, just a couple of USPs and P2Ks, basically a full save. But Nikolai actually gets a kill and picks up a MAC-10. See, maybe he can't make a little bit of money with this. That would certainly help out their economy going into their opening gun round. Bomb is going to get planted by Nip right now in the lower bomb site. Nikolai's still scoping around with this MAC-10 in the vents. Has given his position away with that bullet. And there's actually even a Nip player sneaking up back halls to try to cut him off, which is going to be pit with this Galil. Waiting for him to exit, but Nikolai can just to stay around in here. Valley even picks up an ump as well, so there's a couple of guns in play. This could get a little bit hectic for Nip. Pit gonna take down Nikolai, however. Now Valve jumping in the window looking for a kill, but not gonna happen. So Pit does well to kind of hold off those SMGs that Heroic collected from having any impact in the round. So Nip up 13 to 5. So this is really like this is probably Heroic's one chance to still have have something to go for them on Nuke. Because if you lose this, you're out of money. Nip goes to the map point. It feels like this is like the round. Yeah, good job by Pit there. I mean, this is the round that Heroic needs to come and make this string of rounds happen. Um, so supposedly the name of that room is Decon. So just shorten okay. it up, you know. I Actually, I remember Meta saying yesterday that someone called it Heisenberg. Which actually, that's a really cool name, but once again, kind of long, but it's a pretty cool name. Yeah. Every now and then you get some weird names in CS. I've heard rooms called like Gandalf. And things like that get some weird names yeah remember tuscan oh that spot had some good names oh yeah some of the v <laughs> yeah something like that i know something like that yeah something like that virginia yeah, but, maybe yeah so this is a classic split here doing a three ramp two outside perfect wall smoke this is classic new classic new coming down for us getting the entry gonna meet another one in window room but Madi bests him here yeah, Nip getting control of this lower bomb site. Bomb going down by Freiburg right now. Exists cutting off a lot of these rotations already. It's only going to be Freeze and Valda left. And we do have Valda trying to flank around from back halls here. No one going to show themselves. So Freeze in the meantime coming out the vents does spot Freiburg over there towards Decon. 
Breeze trying to throw a little bit of spam in the smoke, make sure he's not getting pushed. In the meantime, though, Pit has found Valda, and so now it's all on Freeze. And at this point, he has to save the M4 because the money's just so low, they won't really have much to work with next round other than this M4, probably. So it's going to be 14 to 5 in favor of NIP. And I mean, heroic, they're running out of time in rounds. Yeah, I mean, I like this strat from Nip more than any of the strats I saw from Heroic. As well as, you know, how thought out maybe drilled Heroic strats were on that upper site. This one just makes way more sense. You get a smoke wall outside, you get two people just walking down lower. The CTs have no idea or info. If there's two people going down lower, then you have three people pressuring ramp. And it was just a big sandwich in the lower site with so many different crossfires with people, you know, squeezing and sandwiching it. So, um, I mean, and this is one of the, the classic strats that you, you'd always do, right? Like you throw those out two, two outside smokes and then work, work secret, don't work secret, put a lurk there, work ramp, maybe even throw those two sm smokes and actually end up doing a mini split. So many options and you can see Nip is going right back to those smokes. Yeah, they had that wall of smokes again that can get them into secret. You see Freeze trying to slip some info bullets in there. The only gun that Heroic has, but he's not going to find any damage. But Valda's going to press up into secret. He'll find Exist's barrel. And so at least he gets a little bit of information, but I don't think he actually spotted anyone other than Exist. So maybe they still don't really know. But now Freiberg has been spotted by Freeze, and the gig is up. But there's really not much that Heroic can do. I mean, it's, they do have that CZ on Madi, a Deagle on Nikolai, Class 7 armor on Snappy, but... It's just so much they have to worry about now, just three players. There's really not much they're going to be able to do. Exist already finding one of them, and yeah, this round is pretty much going to go the nip with no problems. So, 15 to 5, about to be on the board. Yeah, and uh, Heroic actually saving a little bit for the last round, trying to get that, that 10 rounds in a row to make the, the comeback happen. So, uh, not fully investing it into this one. I wonder if Snappy's gonna kick. No, never mind. He's kind of doing some sneaky things, but I don't think it matters anymore. Everyone's gonna be on alert on pretty much all spots on the map now that they have five up. And there it is, Freiburg going to find Snappy. So 15 to 5 in favor of NIP. You had one of the titans of Nuke going up against a team that's been pretty good on Nuke, but not playing against the same caliber of opponent as an NIP. And maybe now they're starting to kind of realize their limitations on the map, but we'll see. They can turn it around on the CT side. Yeah, I mean, Nip right now, I wouldn't really change up what you're doing. There's no need to, like, force an upper rush where, like, Heroic just instantly aces the team and, you know, like, they get this momentum back. So, you know, Nip is definitely, the, you know, they're veterans. They're not going to be pulling something like that. They're just going to keep to their strategy, working outside here. They're bread and butter. Get right work, work working in the lobby. And... There is a guy actually out close here, Valde, going to be yeah. challenging the outside yard. Yeah, nice flash comes in for him to peek with. We'll take down Freiburg because of that freeze. Also finding a casualty there. That's Forrest down, but look at Exist in Pit. They bring it right back into a three on three. In a blink of an eye, the advantage that Heroic had is all but gone. Full outside control from NIP. Madi trying to fight from lockers here, finds one, but quick, quick to trade once again. So these trades are just even across the board. Going to favor Nip slightly because of that. Heroic. All their efforts seem to be focused here towards this upper bomb site for the time being. Nikolai, though, actually slips through hut, gonna look to flank outside, perhaps. Get right in the meantime, coming through heaven right as he makes that maneuver. So now with no eyes on the upper bomb site, get right will pretty much clear it for free. And now Pitt can just follow behind him with the bomb. And they'll definitely get the plant. There's really nothing to stop them from doing that. What does Heroic do to still win this round, though? I mean, they're in pretty decent positions here, although. I think Nip is even in better positions. I mean, they're mauling Vent here. Get Right's going to be to stay up in Rafters. It's a safe plant from Pit. So even though Nico had lobby control and Snappy's technically watching lower, since they're kind of forfeiting the up, upper bomb site, it's just going to come down to these shots. Snappy comes out of the vents, grabs Pit, and that's just Get Right, the best clutcher in the world. Going to be able to grab one more. No, Ooh. Snappy. Nice shot onto Get Right here. That was nice. I thought with the low HP that Nip were going to seal the deal with that one, but Snappy finds a way to find the shot. And so that means this match will at least go on a little bit longer. It's going to be 15 to 6 now, still heavily in favor of NIP, but Heroic going to stick around for a bit here with that round win. Still so much money on Nip, though. I feel like Heroic's never going to catch a break, right? Like, as Nip runs out of money, they'll, they'll just, like, get the loss bonus to a certain point they could just kind of buy forever almost yeah and they already have two umps not even able to challenge 
or really even counter what Nipsey been doing to them, which is taking that outside. Having no op here or anything, you know, you got two ops, what are you gonna do? So not able to counter Nip's strategy quite yet. You have to, to best him a couple more times. Indeed, as we are gonna see again, that smoke wall coming outside, Nip committing three players inside of it. Actually, four force is also gonna be there on top of Mini, get right, left alone to his own devices inside of the hut area. As Freiburg has already been able to start slipping into Mini Garage. In fact, Valda, though, finds a frag. Snappy as well, chiming in. So good defense thus far. Get right, playing edge of the smoke. Nikolai, though, right there in front of them. Who's going to win the fight? It will be Nikolai. And Freeze also catching Pit outside. So everything seems to be going heroic's way at this point. They've only lost one player. That was Valda the Pit. Other than that, it's been clean. It exists left alone here in a 1v4. Without much to hope for, other than maybe doing some economic damage and forcing some rebuys. Yeah, and, and a clean round at that. So they're going to have a ton of money. Well, not a ton, but you know, not having to rebuy is def definitely going to help their economy here. Being able to buy every single nade that they need to stop an upper rush or anything else that Nip might change up here on this round. But as you can see here, Heroic actually ad adjusting pretty decently there. And I'm so surprised that Gibright didn't get that kill in Hut. I thought he had to jump on him, but... Uh, I don't think you actually see him. Yeah, sometimes things are different from GoTV than what's really there, so Nikolai gonna find that kill, and that's a, a big round for Oak to stay in the game, but you, you have to wonder how much longer can this really last? Like, can they really bring it all the way back? Can they get this into OT? That would be incredible stuff, indeed, if they could. They're on their way, and they get the first kill on this round. That's going to be get right down already. Some aggression here towards the ramp side is going to net heroic two kills. Freeze finding both of them with the AWP. Boris, though, is going to catch Snappy here inside the back hall, so it's going to create a little bit more space for NIP. They do have control of outside. They've put some pressure here in back halls, but Valda has been kind of snake in the grass the entire time here inside Big Garage. We'll finally step out. He's going to find himself a kill, and that'll get it to a 4-on-2 for Heroic. And now, what does Nip do? Exists with the frag on the Mahdi, so they're, they're staying alive in this round, actually. Yeah, that was a beautiful headshot right through the vent there. I could barely even see him through that. Exist just kind of tapped through the vent and just continued to spray. A beautiful shot. 2v3 here. Can the vets of Exist and Freiburg clutch this? They actually have a smoke, and we'll be able to get this bomb down to the low ramp, and Exist is holding the vent, so it's going to some gonna give the vent control up nope he's actually just gonna be holding it here which is a, a super hard position for this guy to get down but nico hitting a beautiful shot on exist freeze is low on hp and that could be the first person freiburg sees so he could actually play this into a pretty quick 1v2 flash comes in and that's great from valda to just kind of use that to step up and make sure they were going to get a trade which is all you need to do in that situation is go one for one. And the bomb will get diffused. And so Heroic, they will find themselves in eighth round. So again, they're sticking around in this half. And they're fighting their way towards the OT. But they still have a pretty long road to travel to actually get there. And again, Nip's money is always going to be there. Right? They're always going to be able to buy up at least a little bit. So you're never really going to catch a break, I feel like, if you're Heroic. Yeah, you're really not because by the time they're broke, they've already gotten the money bonus coming in. So, um, great play by Freeze that round. Those play, those are the plays that you'll need to make happen for you to make this comeback, right? Getting two entry kills at ramp and being aggressive and doing it and hitting some nice shots. So, need more of that. Indeed, as we are going to see Nip a little bit more focused up towards this upper bomb site. They have Exist alone outside of the smokes, but all the rest of these nades are focused on doing something at upper. You can see them slipping down the vent, so it's the old waterfall down the lower, it looks like. Everyone, basically, from Nip is inside these vents at this point. We do have Exist getting caught out outside, but Freiburg gets the entry into lower to get that bomb planted, so now it's a four-on-four. Four. Can Heroic make the retake happen? It's going to be the question now as we see Get Right getting inside of Toxic. Pit has control of the back calls with the Tech 9. He's going to catch Snappy with one HP. Going to follow him around. Grabs the kill easily. Picks up that AK. And now Heroic is running out of numbers to make this retake happen. Only two left. It's going to be Valda and Freeze. Both coming from Ramp Room. So many angles to worry about. Freeze does catch a nice shot on the Pit. But there's still three Nip players alive. It's going to be hard to battle the way through it all. But Freeze tags. Get right through the door. So much damage done. He doesn't realize that he's there perhaps. And he's not enough time to clear everything. And Nip. They'll get it 16 8. A little bit interesting from Heroic, but it just wasn't enough as we'll take the victory. And now they're looking pretty good in this group. I think this puts them at 3 and 1. So they're still second behind FaZe in the standings, but they're in a good position to, to start making their way out of this group now.